And here we go. Hey, this is Flash at the Dork Table with my co host. And this is Grammy. My co hostage. I got yeah. her yeah, I got her duct tape to the chair she's sitting in with the help of my cohort in Kansas. I wondered what that weird noise was every time I shifted in the chair. I yeah. thought maybe it was gas. Yeah, try getting up. <laughs> Thanks, Wayne. Anyhow, uh thank you, Grimner, for all your hard work on the real liberty media dot com. And before we even start, it's time for Begging for money to help support the site from all the supporters. <laughs> yes. It's like a freedom tax, if you want, or a liberty tax, you know. Yeah, and one of the easiest ways that you can do that is you can go to reallibertymedia.com, and if you need to buy something from Amazon, just click on the Amazon link there on the side, and Grimmy gets a little pittance back. Yeah, try to, try to make a habit of doing that. For all you Amazon users out there in Radio yeah. World, want to help Grimmy along. Anyway, so there we go with that, right, Grimner? And this is the dark table where all the cool kids point, spit, generally ups, feel upset having to look at us. But here we are. Well, I'm I'm <sighs> learning to shoot spit wads, but you know those really skinny <laughs> straws. It's hard to shoot spit wads through those. Yeah, I just get a fire extinguisher and get them all at once. You think small. Anyhow, you want to say hi to the bots and the bodies that are loitering in the reallibertymedia.com chat box. Bots and bodies. Bots and bodies. Okay, right up top, we got Barman, the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world. Why? Because I said so. That's why. We also have Beetle. Hey, Beetle. Say hey to Pippi for me. Hey, Beetle. I know we people. also got Grimner, the RLM God, who was on the radio last night at the Freakers Ball with uh, the lovely Moose Mr. Coyle, uh, who's Grimner. right behind him. Mm-hmm. Moosey, I sent you a message about an albino moose. I thought you might enjoy mm-hmm. that. Um, I also see the lovely Miss Kate is here, and it sounds like from yesterday's chit-chats that Miss Kate had a rather... Um, rather scary stormy kind of evening the night before that so Mm. yeah Mm. wild and wacky weather out there brought to you by those crazy people at greenpeace and the world health organization and the new and the new world order and all those fun people yeah they bring you those geoengineering all the joy and and i want i want to give them a a big dork table For all their hard fucking work, you bastards. And and to offering or to nominating Little Miss Greta for the Peace Prize. Thank wow. you. That's just putting the dot on top of the I <laughs> from when y'all gave it to Barry. Dangleberry, who did his best to dr- bring everything to pieces. Uh, oh, that, that Barry. Now. Yeah, Dangleberry. Yeah. We also got... Anti in the chat as uh, well as hey, anti. Chelsea nice Denise. Got that o o out there. Hello, so honey. She, she's couching. And, she's doing crocheting. Oh, cool. Mm. I also see Echelon is here as well as Flash. Hello, me. Uh, Frumpy's here. Frumpy here. Hi, Frumpy. Hello, Hi, Frumpy. you. There's a new observation deck out, too, from the, in case you want to watch it. I didn't yeah. really find it as fascinating as some of the other ones, but eh, it's out there. Ah. Um, I also see I'm here, kind of, sort of. That you Java, are. Java, 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 Java Doctor 2 Java is also in the house, as well Java's as Meister Bra. Hey, Woody. Hey, did you see earlier in the chat that he caught a scorpion in a trap? I Something think like what, that, yeah. 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 This wild. Meister Brower's got all kind of wildness going on. We also got some prints in the chat. Yay, Moosey. Hey. Uh, yeah. As well as Rome's Rome. and Van White, the letter turner of the RLM bots. Yeah. And yeah. Web- Dork, who has been stalking Vanna for quite some time because, well, Weather Dork's got the hot for her. Get it? Global warming, Weather Dork, hot for Vanna. Moving along. The Phantom. Phantom. Help, help. It's, it's the Phantom. Phantom. 
We got a CC66 here as well as Chaskura and a Cyborgian noodle may be touched by the Cyborgian hey, noodle. mental. Yeah, the Dork Cakes is here. Hey, Cakes, how you doing, hon? And some Ensin, or E-Man and Ensin, because E-Man, you know when you have lots of E-Mans, you end all form of civility. Really? Oh. Yeah, because okay. people have a hard time being civil uh -oh. when it's electronic. Now, you just keep your shirt on there, little missy, and don't you get now, actually, too uppity with me. I got my pink fuzzy house coat on. <laughs> oh, it's chilly. The breeze is blowing. Oh, crap. It's, really it's window etching weather, is it? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Frumpy Woik is also hey, here, as well as Gromit. Hi, Gromit. Somebody catch that fish. Quick, oh, quick. fish, fish, fish. Um, da -da -da -da. JJ's, 99 oh. JJ's. How you doing, JJ's? I hope you're feeling James, better, huh? I'm JJ's, was he on Twitter about Huh. Feeling somewhat under the weather. Oh, I hope someone ouch. brought you all your groceries that you were asking for. Wink, mm. wink, wink. Mm. I also see Kiss. We got a kiss. Hey, kiss. Yeah. Pucker up, baby cakes. And some pompo pompo ponza. Oh, no, 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 no. As well that as Sock Puppet. Yeah. Sock, did you want to do that thing with those? Well, I got those little bubble things for my grandkids, mm -hmm. and my daughter said they played so damn much with them that within a couple of months they had holes in them. Cause bubble things? They came home from school, and they would just bam into each other and mm -hmm. burned off a lot of excess energy. Right. Bubble and things. And nobody really got hurt. Mm -hmm. Really? Energy got hurt. Wow. Yeah, really. Interesting you know, there was, there was the it. occasional eh, but you know, it was it was just one of those feelings hurt, not mm -hmm. a real hurt hurt. Mm -hmm. Uh we also got a yeah. smart tag. Smart tag. The holy and the holy of Roger Apper. Holy of Roger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Z mm -hmm. to round out the crew. And Dork Cake going woo 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 woo. Hey, well, I'm glad you showed up on the radio here today. You had me a little worried because it was getting Good. close to airtime. I hadn't heard from you. Oh, yeah. So, hmm, well, I must be getting old. And I were, well, the farmer and I were kicked back and Max yeah. relaxed. I noticed, but he didn't seem yeah. too, he didn't seem to interrupt it when I was chatting with him earlier. So, yeah. Well, yeah. thanks a lot. And today, I got a great idea for us to chat about. You ready for this What's one? That? Are you? Uh, I'm telling you, I know you're, you're wearing your warm, fuzzy thing, but hey, sit down and light a cigarette. Today's title for the show, and let's get my notes so I can come back with it properly the way I wrote it, finally, because I wrote it twice. What's so frightening to the state about a conspiracy theory? That people will figure out it's not a theory. But I saw it in a, um, a Netflix thing, I think, today, or I heard it. You know, one of these dubbed, they're foreign, they're foreign TV shows, and then they're dubbed in English, right? Uh-huh. And I, I heard this, this guy tell the other guy, shut this down before the conspiracy theory, theorists get a hold of it and start spreading it around. And I thought, wow, why are they showing fear to uh, the, what they're calling a lie? It, it's weird. Huh. Oh. I mean, would you be afraid of somebody spreading a, a rumor about you that wasn't true? Like what, uh, uh, like what Kaz did to me with the computer. Uh, yeah. Because people knew better. I mean, people that were close to me knew, but the strangers didn't know. So, hmm. Well, and see, that's the thing. Um, other people that really don't know what's going on, they are, they're going to believe what they want to believe. And odds are, it's really, really difficult to convince someone that you did not do something. Mm -hmm. You know, and so when someone says, oh, you did it, you did it. Really? I mean, you just plain, huh? Yeah, people will understand oh. and believe, hear what they wish to believe. Uh, uh, yeah, go ahead. Do, cake. Yeah, do an interruption for that one. 
Yeah, Dork Cakes just announced that his his brother Scott passed this morning. He has left the physical barrier or the physical plane. Fifty one years old with six children and a wife. I'm sorry for you, Dork Cakes, but I know I know the way I perceive things. I know he's just gone back to where we're all supposed to be anyway, you know, in that, in that, he's, he's gone home. And I don't mean that in a religious, um, yummy, yummy. Kind of thing. <laughs> I, I'm, I mean it as yeah. he's, he's no longer in this cage of yeah. a meat suit. Well, he's if you're free to roam the universe, if you look at mental's uh, comments on the RLM chat, it, he's, he's very well aware of that. Yeah. Yeah. Cause, uh, I know mental, and I don't. I don't think that it's a big emotional bad thing. It's just passing the information on to let us know. So yeah, I, I put a. It's so it's so hard, you know, because hmm. I'm I'm in this in this place where I'm at right now, where I feel bad for the the loved ones around them because I know that oh, they yeah. are feeling yeah. pain and loss, yeah. and yet there is also a part of me that's going. Oh man, they're free, and you can still talk to them. You know, you can still converse with them in depends. your sleep it or daily your... basis. It's just a different belief system. kind of communication. But yeah, it's a different belief system to use to get to where you want to go. Well, I I really do think that you can you can connect with them. Well, sure, everybody would it's want to not... believe that. Come on, that's that's the optimistic you know, good guy way to see that in the first place. Well, yeah. I mean And it's very consciousness is not this body. It is an energy <laughs> that that energy doesn't die. You cannot destroy energy, you just convert it. Well, that is all well and good, but the knowledge and it's one of those conspiracy theories, I No, know. no, no, it's not. It it <laughs> actually makes a lot of sense. But the the problem is it seems to collide with what you're mentally seeing with your eyes and what you smell and taste and hear and all this shit conflicts with that concept. And you know what? Um, I'd read, I think it was Albert Schweitzer who was yeah. given like a peace prize or some such nonsense. But he said that the only way that they could control those black people in Africa. Now, granted, this was over 100 years ago. But the only way that they could control them, the only way that they could get them to, you know, do the mining for them, to do all kinds of other things for them, is to first instill a fear of death in them. Because they did not fear death. They just looked at it as a transition. Mm -hmm. It was all part of life. And so the only way they could enslave them, if you will, is to first instill the fear of death. And so, you know, I think that's what any control mechanism is, you know, including those that say, we don't want you to, you know, look into those conspiracy, quote unquote, theories, because, mm. yes, we're all conspiring. Mm. We want you to be afraid, be very oh, afraid, that, because when you're fearful, yeah. you cannot think logically. That's the core of the whole concept behind the show's name today, is that fear mongering. Oh, Yeah. <clears throat> But as yeah. a consumer, as you know, as a consumer, that is probably where you see it right, looking right at it, and don't really recognize it as the enemy it truly is. In fact, we're so um, we're I'm accustomed to it. I don't know if I would be comfortable without it. But grocery and gross and selling this stuff the way they do is actually against <laughs> it's against the laws that we all agreed upon so they just rewrote shit and re redefined words and changed laws without telling anybody <laughs> so when you look at what you're looking at it's not really what you're seeing it's like a magic trick yeah yeah you're taught to look at the shiny and forget the rest of the picture but still, the redefining the definition of words and then putting them to the public in a different way without telling them they don't mean what you think they mean. But here, go ahead and believe what you like. I think that's like being cruel. 
And then when we argue it, they call us conspiracy nuts. Mm-hmm. So, well, are we? Are we actually the conspiracy nuts? Or are we just uh, the dorks that have the ability to recognize, you know, there's something not right here. We might not all agree on what the something is, but we all agree there is something. Yeah. Yeah, there is. And I think it's all just, you know, part of that that slow, slow cooking frog. Well, even even the opposition to uh, the side we see, Mary, still they oppose their own side. They complain about the, you know, the government did this and the government did that. Well, you voted for the fucking government. Whatever dick sits in the seat you think you're looking at, it's got nothing to do with it. You're watching a TV show on a fucking TV. Just pretend. You're, you're not aware. You're not capable of seeing what's really there. It's very sad. Because yeah. they disguise it so well. I, I believed in all this shit till I was a certain age. Yep. And probably uh, a lot more than I was aware of until I was probably in my 50s, at least. But today, I, nah, today, the last five, six years with Cirx pretty much made it really clear to me that whatever I'm looking at is whatever I want it to fucking be. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, it's all yeah. on your perspective. Your perception and your perspective. Well, uh, to give you a point, too, is earlier my my, uh, buddy down from the lives above the bar I drink at. And, I, you know, I told him you could find me on the chat room so he'd come looking for me today (laughs) on the chat room. And he's a nice kid. He's going to come by and smoke one with me. So I'm like, oh, cool. Yeah, I've seen him in here a couple of times looking for you. Yeah. Well, I just thought, you know, and this is how I mean it about not speaking Danish to the right Danes. They understand. They really do. You know, and there's some of them are young. This kid's like 25 years old. And he's not, he has less trouble with English than I would with Danish. Well. Yeah. So we compromise, I think. Plus they're online. It helps the Danish kids love to practice their English in the grocery and shit. They're still telling me that to this day. Just the other day, one of the girls, oh, I'm so glad you come by. I can practice my English. Yep. So, you know, yeah, well, it's nice to be um, instead of treated like some kind of uh, problem. You know, it's nice to be treated that way. And uh, mental, I put in the notes, mental lost his brother, Scott. As a memo, you know, in these notes on this date, Today, I never even mentioned the date. Today is the 8th of February. Two, yeah, sorry, Cirque's saying sorry back in the corner there. But uh, he, he was more informing us. His brother lived a good life, he says. But he was just letting us know he finally, he's not with us no more. It wasn't a, a misery thing. It was an announcement thing. So everybody's good with whatever became of it. And he's just passing information. I think that's very civilized. Because uh, I lost my mom, and it, it's a personal thing. That you don't need to be all emotional about talking about it with everybody. You know, there's times that where some things just aren't appropriate, I suppose. So you do them in privacy. Mm-hmm. You know, like you're a nation. <laughs> hey, isn't that funny that you're a nation means something else? <laughs> It's a real pisser, no matter how you look but, at it. Yeah, but you're a nation. Yep. Wow. Yep. What a weird. Okay. What a weird language. That's why I was uh, going on about it being dog Latin. Well, it's just like you know, if you're standing outside the bathroom, you're an American. What are you when you're in the bathroom? European. European. <laughs> I, how do you how do you take this one? The extreme always makes the center look crazy. Oh, yeah. But give me an, an example that you thought of when I said that crazy idea. What extreme hit you right away? Anything exciting? What extreme? Yeah. 
Like, what kind of extreme would you think? Did you think of? Because mine was political. See, and and to me, I think it was more of a um, medicinal. It's like mm. you have to do this, or you're gonna die. You know, you have to. Oh, do this, it's very well, you know, extreme. Yeah. You know, because they really don't. Whenever it's delivered by a doctor, well, if you don't do this, you're going to die. Guess what? We're all going to do that anyway. It's part of this whole physical thing. Is it? But you might die sooner. Oh, Mm. really? Do you know when I'm actually scheduled to go? (laughs) And if I don't do what you want me to do, then I'm going to go sooner than Mm. scheduled time? Wow. Now, do you feel that you're extreme on on a level medicine to another person oh i'm i know i've i've been told that i'm yeah okay so all right so here's the the question i got about it is more well what's the difference so if if you're both fighting and you're both wrong at the same time so somebody has to stop <laughs> or whatever you know you can't both be talking at the same exact time somebody's got to listen so, hmm. wow, what a what a position to be in. Because the truth is right in front of our faces all the time. And I just think that they use the wrong ways to show it to us. So we see it, but we don't really know what we're looking at. <laughs> did that make sense to you? Or did that sound like a conspiracy theory? Um... No, I don't. You know, that whole conspiracy, and I really did not realize where it, um, where that whole phrase started from. Oh, the CIA did it. Yeah, well, I know it was the CIA, but I didn't know it was people calling into question the Warren report. I just thought it was the CIA. It was the Kennedy assassination whole thing started. That was the CIA thing to make you not ever get taken seriously. If you doubted the official statement, and it was such stupidity, I mean, only only idiots could have believed it. You do realize that they said they started. How dare you? Way before Greta made it popular. Oh please! How yeah, dare Greta. you question? Yeah. That means you 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 didn't like our president. No, I didn't say anything about not liking the president. I'm saying that I think you dirty douchebags had something to do with it. How dare you, yeah. you conspiracy theorist? Yeah, See, they did that way yeah. before Greta was even a twinkle in Mommy and Daddy's eyes. Well, they've retired her already anyway. She, they used that poor kid up in, what, a year? That was sad what they did that uh, poor kid. And then they, I don't think they're done using her. Well, they even had people following her around, right, to prove that you can't travel at that speed and, you know, and get all these things done and go to all these places without using the shit that you're telling everybody not to use. Because you know, they show you a picture of the inside of a car with her award in that picture in the car <laughs> and a bunch of them. All the shit that they're telling you not to use is all over the car. <laughs> well, you know, it's... it's... You, can't, yeah. you can't win. What, what do I... Come on. Call it what you want, hypocrisy or not. It doesn't really matter. This game is so fucking rigged that even the people that are are the opposition to us, they're so desperate, they they don't even try to hide their lies. They just lie. (laughs) Oh, yeah. They just lie to your face. There you go. It's all set up to where you have to use their stuff to bitch about their stuff. Why? Because they have all the stuff, or at least so they've told us. We own this. That's my intellectual property. Really? Really? Yeah. So if I have a thought, that's my thought forever. Forever. It's because Al Pacino, I mean, um, Al Gore made a movie. See? Yeah. And and this is the truth about the bottom of of all this shit, the cornerstone of the stupid shit we're doing today is based on these idiots they they look up to hollywood like it's like it something sacred right so al gore makes his fucking movie and gets an award for it from these butt fuckers in california 
<laughs> and the next thing you know, oh, oh we've got climate change. <laughs> Did you know, somewhat off topic, but you said Hollywood. Did you know that magic wands, you know, the wands that the wizards used or whatever back in the day, were made from the holly tree? No, mine's and made so, out of the mommy and daddy tree. Well, it's made out of the yeah, holly I did. tree. Yeah, I did. Therefore, yeah. holly yes. wood uh -huh. or spell casting. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, but see, that's what I mean is you know this stuff. Where did you find that? Um, actually, listening to some uh, Barbara Marciniak channeling sessions on YouTube. Hmm. You got something you want to throw in the notes for an example if people are curious? Oh, or Crime not? and Christmas. I would have to do some. Oh, okay. Then no, no, no. no. Just, I can do some digging. Or I could just type in what it's called into the notes and let people look it up themselves. And did like, you also uh, know wait, this wait, is something else wait, that I look, saw? Hold on, let me put this in here. Look for what was her name? Uh Barbara Marciniak. B A R B A R A. Barbara. Uh huh. Okay. S Y M A R C Oh, M A R. Wait a minute. Yeah. Okay. Marciniak. Oh, M A R. -R. Yeah. Uh C I or C E N I A K. I think is how it's spelled. I -A -K. Okay. And I say um, videos on YouTube? Yeah. Okay. On, on YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. All right. And you know something else that I ran across just before um, hmm. you and I got on the wire? Hmm. Someone over on Global Witness Network shared this thing about research showing that burning sage kills 94% of airborne activity. Really? Yeah, and wow. so burning sage was always, you know, mm -hmm. to cast out evil spirits mm -hmm. and all that other fun stuff. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, mm -hmm. so the educated academics say that in religious ceremonies, they would burn sage in mm -hmm. order to dispel the evil spirits. Perhaps they were clearing the air of all of the airborne bacteria that is causing you adverse effects. So, so it worked. <laughs> you know, the academics say that they were all, you know, oh, it was all religiosity. And it all had to do with, you know, this crazy nonsensical God stuff. Hmm. When actually it had a, it has a very um, real scientific basis to it. So maybe they weren't such religiosity heathens back in the day as we thought. Maybe they were a hell of a lot smarter than our academics are nowadays. It's I'll go very, ahead and put that link in the chat. It's very difficult to tell. Well, what I wrote was, Gramsci says, look for Barbara Marciniak. Marciniak. The, yeah, well, M-A-R-C-E-N-I-K. Mm -hmm. How uh, the computer will fix the spelling, right? No. And it's she channels Pleiadians, and you know sometimes because okay. I've got some of her books that I got from my mother, and I found them quite fascinating reading. Yeah. But um, I'll throw in this any case, into you the know, notes. it was just one of those things where I just had it on autoplay while I was doing mm -hmm. things around the house, yeah. and it was one of those times where I went, "Holy crap! Uh oh, that's kind of cool." <laughs> but. <laughs> This site is not open to me because it's got a third party something Hana boo boo thing. And the EU has got all up in Denmark's ass controlling what we open on the internet over it. So ah. I can't put this particular link into the notes. That's all. I'd have to open it up oh. in a from another country on the what you call it. To open the link is all I'm saying. Okay. Well, yeah, I'll because uh, Cirque says because they want to spy on me. So the government stops all the shit from bothering with you in the first place. It's an inconvenient, I'm but it works. So, but yeah. Oh, there you uh, go. Uh, oh, um, okay. Let me try that. Stuart Cakes did something. And I just shared the link to her channel on YouTube. All right. So. The Barbara Marciniak channel. Okay. The one that says um, USS. It's the yeah, but it says channel USS, UCS, FF. Uh-huh, okay, FF. Right. There. Well, that way I copied yeah. the right one. 
Okay, then we can get back to our little chitter chatter. But where I was at, it was like the extreme always makes the center look crazy, you know? Oh yeah. Uh, it, it's it, like it's unfair of me to constantly bash, you know, like Trump supporters in a sense, because if that's what you know, and you really believe that stuff is true then I must sound like a nut job telling you that, you know, your great big orange head is a dick because you don't you don't live on that wavelength of reality. See and and when that finally sunk in on me yeah. several months back, it really mm. I mean I've I've always kind of sort of known that, but when it mm. finally sunk in on me it's like, okay, I will drop seeds, if mm. you will. Mm. I tell you what, I have that as well. I will just go ahead and grab that link and post it in the chat. Um, it's it's a meme that says, um, we cannot force someone to hear a message they are not ready to receive, but we must never underestimate the power of planting a seed. Yeah, very true. Because, I mean, we all started somewhere, and uh, we ended up where we are, whatever where we are is. And some people got it uh, pretty comfortable, and other people are. So now the the link was the benefits of sage, right? Uh huh. Okay, I got that in the notes. All right, I just wanted to make sure I was right, and it's right. Go ahead, right, I'm done. Uh, oh, and Moosey just said Pleiades equals home, which yeah, mm. they are our ancestors, and we are their ancestors because time is not mm. linear. I don't, you see, there you go with these objective kind of uh, topics, if you think about it. Because yeah. we're all right, because we individually see it how we see it. So, mm -hmm. to, you know, to tell you how I see it is all you're doing to me, you know. Because I'm listening to you tell me about your experience. But I don't seem to take how you explain yourself as... This is how I do it, too. You seem to be, be able to get to me in a sense of listening to the, you know, you're telling me something about how you do something, not so much telling me how I have to do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So maybe it could be because I know you better than some people, but I don't know. It's And that's what I mean about all this subjectivity that we deal with. And it's very individual because you can disagree with everybody about every fucking thing if you really think about it. Uh-huh. But not tell them. Then they don't know. But you still disagree with them. You just haven't made a point of saying it. You know, and that's I think that's what causes a lot of the problems is, you know, you can disagree with all kind of stuff or yeah. even just with the delivery. And yeah. when you stop and think about it later, it's like, oh, okay, I get that. I get that. I just wasn't getting it the way you were putting it out there. You mm. know, one of those, because I have a lot of those moments where it's down the road a ways, several mm. days, several months, or even just a couple of minutes later, and I just go, mm. oh, okay, I get it now. <laughs> I know. I have the same fucking way. Isn't that some, and other things? The minute somebody starts talking, it's like my brain hears the word before they utter it in English. You know, yeah. certain situations, there's only so many words that are going to come out of that. It's not infinite. So I kind of pay attention and I kind of don't at the same time. And it just bounces through life. It's very weird. It, it doesn't always work out well for me. <laughs> Paying attention would assist, but it seems like such a bother. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, sometimes it is a bother to pay attention. And well, it really does take an awful lot of effort. That's what I'm saying is why, am, you know, I'm some kind of dork where paying attention is like, I do it in such a weird way that it doesn't look like I'm doing it at all. Yeah, like covert behind, you know, because I, I can't see it. My glasses I wear, I can I can see about five or six feet clearly. And beyond that, it's because of the reading glasses. It's a little odd. So I got I have to focus at what's across the room. 
It's mm-hmm. a little. It amuses me now, but when I can't see anymore, I wonder if I'll be laughing. You know? And you know that's supposed to be a really good eye exercise too. That whole, you know, you look up close and then you look at a distance and then you look up close and then you look at, and you're you're supposed to do that like every breath. You know, look up close. Get your focus, then look distant. And even if things are blurry, find something to kind of focus on and then look at a distance. And, you know, you're supposed to do that for like five minutes every day, and it helps exercise the muscles in your eye to uh, help you with with not having the muscle atrophy issues with nearsightedness as you get older or mm-hmm. Some of that other fun stuff. So I have occasionally done that, but I'm not real good at it. You know, I I read that in a book once. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it was uh, two years before the mast. It was some kind of a... My mom had a collection of uh, classic books from, you know, years before. And that was one of them. And I remember the, uh, the guys going out to see for two years and he's got a bad eye and what they do is they put a patch over the good eye <laughs> to make him use the bad eye so the bad eye will yeah. heal and it was written in the book so I thought wow what a coincidence to remember something so obscure like that because of Miss Mary <laughs> and you know I have I had two nieces hmm. that they wore glasses where one of the lenses was really really uh, like frosted over or whatever to make the other eye work harder. Yeah. I think yeah. they had like a lazy eye or I don't remember what it was, but now neither one of them need to wear glasses. So, uh, Well, I've also read Saffron. I have yet to pursue it. I'm still, I'm such a lazy guy. I figure the glasses are still working with the fuck. Why mess with it? But now, as time progresses... <laughs> Yes. I start to reconsider my stands on certain things, just as I always have, you know. Mm-hmm. And wow, you know what? The weirdest part about this whole fucking life experience is that there's like there's three versions to this. If you live with somebody else, right? Yeah. Okay. Now there's my version of what's happening, right? Mm-hmm. And, and then there's Circle's version of what's happening, right? Uh-huh. And then there's what's really happening that's happening that neither one of us can actually define because we see it differently. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, you were talking about the eyes, and I'd mm-hmm. actually, uh, a week or so, well, it's been a couple of weeks now, I made an oil blend because... I was seeing those those prism things uh, in yeah. the in my field of vision, yeah. and uh, they say that. Um, well, I looked it up on the internet, and they said that a lot of times that's a precursor to a migraine. Well, I've had migraines before, but it's been forever ago. Oh yeah. And good. So I thought, okay, I don't want to have a migraine, so I started looking in my oils book to see if I could come up with some kind of eye nutrient thing. Mm. And uh, lemongrass, sandalwood, cypress, lemon, fennel, eucalyptus, lavender, and then the protective blend that's got cloves and, and a few other oils in it. Um, but I mixed myself up a blend and put it in a rollerball thing, uh-huh. and I started using it morning and night, just, just rolling it around, you know, along the cheekbones and up Above, yeah, away from the actual eye tissue. Yeah, you don't want to put it on the eye because it'll burn yeah. like a mother yeah. pus, but, you, you know, around the eye area. And I was really starting to see a difference and went out to see the grandkids last weekend. And um, my daughter, my granddaughter was eye issues, so I put some on her and she went, ooh, lemongrass. Oh, wow. And uh, she really likes lemongrass. Well, her best friend came over later in the day, and and I gave my granddaughter some more. And her best friend goes, ooh, lemongrass. I put some on her. Well, I wound up leaving the rollerball with them. So I need to mix up another batch of it because it really, I think, helped. And I know both of the girls were just tickled. And I showed them, use the, the heel of your palm. Don't rub it. You know, don't rub it into your skin with your fingertips. Use the heel of your palm because, number one, you can't put quite as much pressure 
with the heel of your palm as you do with fingertips. And number two, you're more likely to touch your eyes with your fingertips than you are with the heel of your palm. And you don't want to get those oils in there. So show them how to do all that fun stuff. And it's like, okay, I really miss my rollerball with my eye stuff. I need to make me another rollerball with my eye stuff. So, <laughs> darn kid. But see, that's my problem. Is I'll make a rollerball and I'll start trying it out on me. And then I'll say, oh, I've been doing this lately. Here, try some. And then yeah. next thing you know, I lost you another rollerball. Yeah. Well, you could always become a greedy Jew like me. Do not share your toys with anybody. I could. Unless they're licensed by the state of Israel and stamped on their butt with a big Jew stamp. (laughs) Yeah. Can you imagine if people knew the reality of what we live in, do you really think that they agree to the shit that they agree to? If they understood it, you know, in an honest light, not the storyteller shit we get, you know, but the reality of it all. I don't know if we're prepared for that as a big group. Well, no, we probably aren't, and that's that's probably why it's not a good thing that everybody has access to their telepathic. Oh yeah, people would be swinging off a lamppost by their neck. I believe, you know, if the if. What is real and true and has happened got out to the public in a way that they could actually look at and go, whoa, we were taken for a ride. Yeah. That's what they need. Even if if people, you know, all of a sudden Hmm. their lie detector or their BSO meter Hmm. was engaged to where every time someone told them a lie, even if it was a little white lie, they, they would have alarm bells going off. Man. The, the turmoil that would go on in the world right now. Hmm. And that's why I think a lot of people go, well, we're just not woke enough. We're going down the road. We're, we're doing this. We're doing that. It's like, oh, sweetheart. Seriously, if everybody just all of a sudden woke up, yeah, you would lose most of the population. How Some so? of them, because so? they went nuts and took themselves out because they just plain couldn't handle it. I don't and feel some that of way. them. No, would take no, no, off no. others with them because no. they just like, couldn't handle it. No, 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 no. You know, the two kids, the one that I was talking about come looking for me earlier today on the RLM that I've met, you know, these kids are ha- less than half my age, but they think the way we do. And they live in Denmark. And they're not yeah. against their government. They're not crazy, but they really do understand what government is. They're not, they're not like uh, you know, blind to the truth. They just live with the truth. Well, you know, government is an excellent teacher. It's just that people have used government as a crutch. Yeah. Well, yeah. The government said, well, the yeah. government's a really good teacher on how not to behave. Well, you know, when you're artistic in your head, sometimes uh, society will label you mental. Yeah. Okay. Because the. Uh, the artist doesn't have that greed bone that the, the labor guy does. Lots of artists just plain create because they can't help it. Well, right. But, you know, I remember where I like to do it because I like to do it. When I got paid to do it, I that was kind of different. But it was more interesting to me when I did what I wanted instead of what it, somebody wanted me to do. You know, yeah. I, I like the spontaneity of just doing something and then seeing where it would go instead of somebody hiring me to do a specific, do this, this way. Because I I'd had in my past where I had children in the house, so I painted, and three of them were, you know, girls. So in the girls' room, I painted the Little Mermaid about five foot tall. And then, you know, girly cartoons, Disney stuff all over the room. Um, yep. But in the boys' area, I put a uh, big boat. And, well, just it was different. And uh, I remember when I was going to move, the person that I rented the place from said, "Hey, can can you not paint over the walls? I want to keep those." Went, sure, because I was just you know doing what I do. Mm-hmm. But when it was for money, then it was I don't know. It was all right. It wasn't like I'm. 
complaining about. It just it was more confining. It was different. It kind of had a, a different vibe to it. Yeah, confining. Yeah. I think it was. It controlled my yeah. freedom. But yeah. Mm, but art is such a personal kind of thing. It's hard. And and uh, Cert was trained to do what I just know know how to do. So she doesn't know how to do what I do the way I know how to do it. But when we do what we do, we we'll both come out with a similar uh, end result. I just get there from a different way that her brain can't process. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's the wonderful, wonderful part about, you know, how unique we all are because we all are going to see things slightly mm-hmm. differently. Mm-hmm. We're all going to have a slightly different way of getting there, mm-hmm. but we're all going to wind up getting there eventually. But it, it, it's just weird how some people can have a talent and it be brought out of them with, you know, a, a teacher. And some uh-huh. people have a talent that if, if a teacher gets involved, it'll destroy the talent that I got. Yeah. If I would have ever gone to school to be trained properly, they would have rearranged the way I do it, and I wouldn't have ever been able to do what I do. So, you know, by giving up that uh, desire to uh, go to school and all that shit and be more, I settled for whatever the fuck I truly was. And it was by luck. You know, it wasn't like a grand scheme. I just fell into it. And now that I'm 60, shit, I can look back and go, oh, I can see now why I made that choice. But when I was doing it, whatever it was, I was just living. Now, at the time, yeah. in my mind, I had no... Like, today, whatever I'm scheming on today, I won't see what that is for 10 years. No. Yeah. Well, that's the way my it's brain It's a long-range planning thing. Yeah, me and Cirque are coming up on 6 in uh, March. Wow. I know, huh? It seems like yesterday. I mean, really. And I've got this whole lifetime thing going on. Hannibal's going to be five years old. See, and that's that's where that whole um, linear logic or linear time versus, mm. um, you know, all times are happening right now. All things are happening right now because it's <laughs> – that's how that's mm-hmm. how you know that you're kind of getting there because you know things seem like well it seems like it was just yesterday. <laughs> well, it was actually it was just yesterday. Yeah, sure was because everything is just if it's not right now everything else is just, just yesterday. Just the, yeah, just and the the time lapse and the, the decay is kind of interesting. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. as things age, you know they change. They it's actually I call it decay. I don't know, changes. So you're not what you started out as. It's basically no. physically looking at it, but it's still the same. It's just older. And yeah, you know, I've noticed that uh, older people don't get very much attention from even younger people here. It, and it's not like a negative thing. It's just like, uh, hmm. I don't think that the... Uh, the the outside society matters as much as the personal one does. Yeah. You know, amongst their families, these people are as tight as ticks on a dog's ass. You want to fuck with one, you're going to fuck with eight. So don't do it, you know? Yeah. Well, that's the common bond here. But socially, that, they don't seem to, you know, they don't cling to each other like the. uh needy it's very weird they're very odd like a a relaxed population whatever this is where i'm at well that's cool well good bad or indifferent i was just observing and reporting that you know what things are like in this hectic time of coronavirus and you know bill gates is depopulating and George Soros is paying people to do shit that's really fucked up. And Donald Trump couldn't find his ass with both fucking hands in a toilet, but hey, we all know that. Yeah. You know what he did? Yeah. You know what he fucking did? You know, you had that what, NAFTA, some kind of trade agreement with Mexico. 
And one yeah. of one of his North big, American free trade there agreement. Now, or one of his big deals was how he's gonna fucking stomp all over that, burn it, take a shit on it. Well, you know what he did? He did. It did another he, one, almost he like it. Rewrote the fucking thing and just titled it different. Got the same fucking thing. Uh, yeah. And no wall. You know, no. a lot of people need to just stop and realize that that's a lot of what the government does. Is it just repeat and repeat uh, all over the place, and all they do is give you a new name for it. I mean, didn't the EU teach you guys shit? Is it, it's like, you, the, I, if you look in the history, not the books, but if you, the one you lived in, and you open your eyes to what you fucking saw, you see the reruns of reruns of reruns of reruns. Like this uh, uh, obsession with Iran. <laughs> Well, I think the obsession with Iran has absolutely nothing to do with oil and has everything to do with real historical stuff going on. Oh, fuck, yeah, and the Jews and the Arabs, all this drama, drama, drama way over there, somebody else's land. Now, wait till it's Manhattan, then it's going to change. Yeah. And they're inviting it, they're bringing it on, these damn Jews will not get the fuck off. They want World War Three. They know if Iran comes, so does Russia. They've got a pact to back each other up in times of crises. If you don't believe that, talk to Iraqi. <laughs> when Iran yeah. and Iraq were at war, who do you think stood up for Iran? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, well, this is huge. These people are playing fun. Trump was taking credit, like at least the memes on the Internet indicated that Trump is taking credit on Twitter for, you know, killing this uh, savage, barbarian, blah, 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 towelhead guy. Terrorist, yeah, whatever, right, mastermind. Right, right. right. but the, the method that he used to do it was more sinister than what the fucker was accused of doing. Yeah. He was lured to a place to negotiate peace. And when he got there, they got fucking bombed. Now, if that isn't, and then bragging about that like it's some kind of cool thing, what the fuck happened to my country, people? <laughs> I leave you guys for eight years and you got Donald Trump in power? <laughs> what? Right. Oh. McFly! <laughs> Where's Marty when you need him? <laughs> just, I'm uh, sorry, Mary. I just, it's I, so hard uh, to believe. And, you know, it wouldn't matter who it was in the scene. It just it's funny as fuck because <laughs> everything that's happening, people were promised when the electoral college said, "Well, we're gonna fuck Hilton, the popular vote fucker. We're gonna give it to Trump instead," and they believe now nah, he'll keep us out of war, and jobs and walls are going up, and what really happened? <laughs> he, Job uh, uh, he finished. He, he finished what George Bush started in 205. Uh, and that's the Canada and Mexico and USA are union. <laughs> You'll see. Yeah. And you see. That's why I was saying, didn't the EU teach you guys anything? I mean, these politicians, they tell you one thing and then behind your back, you know, <laughs> Well, you're looking at their impeachment. They're signing away your jobs, <laughs> your pensions, and the future. Yeah. Yeah, you guys are going to be chomping down on fucking zombie brain before you know it if these politicians don't stop what they're doing. They're just going to kill everybody. They're so greedy, you know. They can't get the fuck enough. They run around whining about people that are on <laughs> people that are on the government dole. <laughs> one one fucking politician. You spend probably what a hundred times more on that politician in his lifetime than you do on the uh, citizen. <laughs> you know. So who's the parasite, really? The the guy that that you know society put in this position. If you look at it properly, you're overpopulated, underjobbed undernourished, all your input is all poisoned and second rate. And it's everywhere. Anywhere there's humans, this is how we get treated. And wow, there's just not enough of us that understand it 
as a changeable thing to, to make it change. <laughs> That's the way I see it. There are a lot of people who are very happy with life just the way it is because they've got fucking phones that rub their nuts. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And the, why, things couldn't be any better. What are you, stupid? And I blame it on the phones. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the phones and the wonderful little radiation or frequencies or whatever you want to call it coming off of them. The people just, man, I can't tell you how many friends I have that just stick their phone in their bra and it's like, stop oh. doing that. Yeah. Jeez. Because, see, man, you see what we see. Other people yeah. not so much. And I'm still thinking about all this extreme uh, coronavirus out of China. And it strikes me as such good timing that you know they they tried the five G, and this is the result of the five G, not goddamn coronavirus. The coronavirus well, was expected to okay. They're gonna get one percent of uh, people that get a flu are gonna die. Okay, two mm-hmm. percent of the people that get coronavirus are gonna die. This is the number that they're concerned with. So, it no, it's not epidemic. or no, It's probably this. <laughs> we always get fucking lied to about some. So. I'll tell you what. Twitter has become really funny with that because I saw someone. Of course, I'm following a lot of people that are, you know, Vax Truth mm-hmm. people. They're not necessarily anti-vaxxers. They're mm. vax truth people. They say if if you can come up with a vaccine that has <laughs> done the <laughs> double-blind placebo, yada, yada, blah, blah, all of this, and you haven't doctored the results and proved to me that it is safe and effective, I will consider it. But when you start telling me I have to do it, when you haven't done any testing on it whatsoever and you have absolutely zero accountability on it, no, I'm not going to do something that you tell me I have to do. And, well, we said it's safe, and so that ought to be good enough for you. So, you know, that's the kind of people that I've been following. And, oh, my God, the trolls that have come out of the woodwork. There was one guy earlier today that said um, – In 2017 and 2018, 60,000 people died from the flu in the United States. And I'm like, really? Seriously? Where did you get your numbers, dude? (laughs) What the hell? But they just, they throw out these big numbers Mm -hmm. to try and counter Mm -hmm. you. And they absolutely have no freaking data to back up what they're throwing out there. And then if you call them out on it, then it's like, well, you anti-vaxxer. Oh, ooh, sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. No, but those vaccinations will. Yes. And well, the, they can uh, keep their little pricks to themselves. Well, what what really baffles me about that, you know, from being a parent in the first place, is if something was getting recognized by my peers as, hey, everybody that does that dies, it would get around. You know, people would go, hey. My kid knew this, that, and the other. So where does the support come from when the results are so obviously fucking bad? And that the support comes from the fear porn that is fed into us. Yeah, but from what source? It sure as hell ain't only the Internet, because there's a lot more resistance on the Internet than there is even in the public. And I just... For the world, I just think that so, such a small percentage of people that are on the Internet bother to use it to find out anything of any value. We usually just use it to entertain and kill some time and get through the rest of the day and not think, you know, because this yeah. is some freaking uh, nasty shit to have to think about. Mm-hmm. It's not pretty. I mean, damn, I'd hate to, I'd hate to hear this from somebody and not know what the hell he was talking about before I heard it. You know, but if you don't know, then you won't know. And if you do know, then I'm just preaching to the choir. And that's okay with me, because at least there's a choir. You know? Yes. I'm not completely alone in this crazy way that I see the world around me as a collective, not an individual thing. I don't judge people by the 
government, they fucking owns their paperwork bullshit. That's got nothing to do with it. You know, you, I either like you or I don't. Your, your representation doesn't mean fuck all. We've just been trained to, to judge each other as, you know, countries instead of each other. And I'm learning yeah. that from these freaking younger kids because they've got the ability to look beyond all the, you know, all those barriers that were put up for me when I was growing up. Everybody was your enemy because we're at war with somebody, Vietnam or it was always some fucking body until I was like 59, 60. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> you weren't listening. Moving along. Yeah, but we've. The United States always been at war with somebody. Well, my whole life. I'm I'm hoping that a lot of kids are learning to judge people by the content of their character, their actions, and their words, as opposed to what political party they ascribe to, yeah, what yeah. books they you know may read. Because a lot of times, I mean, I've read some books that I really did not like the subject matter, but I'm glad I read the book. Like because, what? Um, oh, um, oh, what is it? Got one in the bedroom, right? You know about the Quran. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, I can see that. You know, so it's it's interesting. It's information that you get, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that I'm a Quran believer. No, it just no, means no, that no. it was information that I wanted to, so I could get a little bit more understanding of what the hell is going on here. And are so, you aware of the advantage that I see that you have? in this whole scheme of things, looking at your Koran, because it was not originally written in English. It was translated into English from another language, right? Uh-huh. So, mm -hmm. you already know that in your mind, right? So, when, mm -hmm. when you've gone and, and had some of these words defined and find out what they really mean, not what we're told they mean. That's what this Webster thing was about. So they could control the definition of the word and upgrade and change things and add to it. Because it's bullshit. <laughs> we're we're mm -hmm. being yeah, we're we're being controlled in ways that are beyond our ability to understand. Because it, I'm free to say it. Look at how free I am. <laughs> mm -hmm. So all these you know, all these rights and bullshit were, were all stuffed down our throats about we got the right to do this and the right to do that. When the fuck has any of this shit ever come up in your fucking day? <laughs> you know? Wh See, and what? that whole we've got the right to do, I've got, I have every right to. Okay. Yeah. Stop and think about yeah. this. If you think you have every right to something yeah. and yet someone else does not have that right, it yeah. really is not a right. <laughs> You know, what, you know what I learned from listening to the Clint on that link the other What's day? What's that? Well, I've been mocking privileges my whole fucking life and thinking rights was what everybody was after, right? Uh-huh. And I, I, I didn't really understand. The definitions have, of course, been twisted to us. And mm -hmm. if you do a little investigation, you find out that rights are basically for slaves. <laughs> Yeah. Privilege is what the wealthy have. <laughs> yep. Clean title to their property. Things that us slaves, and I, I'm a slave, I'm nobody. So all us slaves will never have these wonderful things. But the government doesn't exactly tell you that part. They kind of eliminate that bit. Well, because they don't want you to notice how cushy and soft the cage really is. Because if you notice how cushy and soft the cage really is, then you notice there's a cage. Well, then isn't it due... Remember we had the financial collapse back in 2008. You know, and everybody was too big to fail, and everybody was whining, and they, okay, let's give them some more money. All right. Now, we're going to have another one of those events coming up because the petrodollar is in deep doo-doo. That's right, mm -hmm. folks, here on the dork table on this 8th of February 2020, we're going to announce to the world. <laughs> 
that I foresee eventually, I don't know how far from now, but sometime in the future, and it looks like the competition to the point we're at now is China. Russia mm-hmm. is suspiciously quiet, and so is Israel. <laughs> but these mm-hmm. these idiots that support all this freaking global crap, these monkey, well, whatever they are, they really irritate me to a level I, I think I made clear. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> Did you get it? <laughs> I don't. I don't lie. And I live in Denmark, and I'm telling you, I could give two flying fucks about getting my goddamn shoes from Italy and my shirts from China and all that global crap that people get all sucked up on because you watch shit on the TV. (laughs) Yeah, and -and so-and-so is better. You know, it's the whole (laughs) sneeches on the beaches kind of thing. Ah, but we have stars upon ours. You pay a hundred. Uh, you pay a hundred. I got four and a half stars on this <laughs> one, so yeah, I got the better one. A hundred and thirty yeah. bucks for a pair of shoes that cost two dollars to make. They got more money invested in transporting the fucking things than they do in what it costs to make them. Uh huh. Uh huh. And there, there's taxes on taxes on taxes on taxes on taxes, and beyond well, that. The fucking money. Everybody that, has to have their cut, you know. Yeah, but it's the, that whole great big extortion racket. But it's all promissory notes that don't have any value. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, it's gonna I'm, it's gonna cave in like a mountain on a. You know. Oh man. The reason that continues is because you know it's kind of like with the blowjob. If you called it a suck job, which is what it truly is, how many people would actually do it? <laughs> oh, <laughs> baby, I want. <laughs> Hey, baby, I want a suck job. Excuse me, if I can suck job, do it yourself. You know? Yes, ma'am. I, I just got a lesson on blowjobs. It's, wow. it's along the same lines, you know? If you I actually so. called it what it was. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, hey, no, I'm not going to let this come across my little line, imaginary line in the dirt unless you give me some more of that debt right there. You know, nobody's going to... If you nobody wants to play if if they put it right out there, mm. oh, I gotta have my piece of the pie. I gotta have a cut of this before you can bring that over here. You gotta pay me. Yeah, give me some more of that debt. Yeah, but, that's basically what they're doing. But yeah. nobody wants to know that, right. so they say, oh, I'm getting a cut of the profits. Yeah, and, yeah. and I'm a profit, and I mm. foresee that mm. you have no freaking clue what you're involved in. But there's also no opt out. So that kind of, you have a captive audience, in a sense, Mm -hmm. right? Because, you know, the outlaw, if you listen to Hal Anthony talk, you know what an outlaw is. And if you don't, you've got some traditional TV sense of the word thing going on, misguiding you. Because when, you know, like we've tried to explain to people over many years, when you get a driver's license, all that means is you're paying a fee to do something that you should just be able to do. There's no reason for that except that the system that operates is conned you into believing that you need this, and you truly don't. Oh, but people yep. drive badly and get in accidents. Well, you know what? If there was nobody to fucking help you, I'll bet you'd drive, you'd drive slower. <laughs> And if somebody yeah. didn't, fuck them. They, they had their opportunity to do things right. You know, they've got the Autobahn well, in Germany. where see, speed limit, it all, but, hmm. To me, it all goes back to the absolute loss of not only respecting for your, yourself, but respect of others. And hmm. you can't respect others unless you respect yourself. And a lot of these people, they don't really understand the concept of self-respect. Yeah, they think it's a selfishness, and it's really about all of us at once. And it's really it's you got to balance being everything. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you know the dog and the cat get hungry at different times. Yeah. But if I don't feed them, well, then they're either going to get sick and die, or they're going to turn on me and eat me. So I feed them. And yep. and instead of forcing my will on them, I'm a real idiot because I've got two crazy outside inside animals. I cater to their food wants when they want, mm-hmm. and 
There you go. Instead okay, of I got to uh, get to this. Moosey shared this link, and I got to do this. You want it on just, the you want it on the notes. Uh, yeah, yeah she shared it earlier, but it, it says stop planting flowers in people's yards who aren't going to water them. In other mm-hmm. words, how far know, back is it? Uh, a ways because you kept oh, talking and wow. kept talking and kept talking. That's what I do. <laughs> I'm broken. <laughs> Which you know it was a lot of where's it at? Mm -hmm. Um, I'm looking. Okay, it's Mm -hmm. because it's not that far back. What time? Just oh wait, I got ten thirty one. No, mine shows fourteen oh one, but that's my time here. Yeah, but it'll still be oh one here. It's just above Beetle showing his little thing with the scroll Uh, bottom. Beetle showing. So, Wait a minute. Beetle showing his thing. Uh-huh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Can you just copy and paste it? So put it at the bottom of the RLM so I can just get it. Just do that. The The bot will call you an idiot. But so what? I, really I know. I know. Live and let live. <laughs> Clint, you know, well, Clint even called, uh, called us... Uh, anarchists, a group of dummy dumbheads. I do remember hearing that, yeah. But, see, that's because he understands the meanings of the words that go into the the explanations. So, for the guy that, that's what I mean, it's a mindset. It's not a physical thing that you do. That's how I've always said that to you. You just... Don't do shit, and that's an anarchist standpoint. Well, he's going out for the guy that I think joins a group because that's not what an anarchist is in the first place. You wouldn't join a group. You're an anarchist. (laughs) Well, what the fuck would you want a group for? Then you're a group. Then you're not an anarchist anymore. Now you're a statist. You know... Hmm. We keep planning on having a meeting of procrastinators and all of us, but we just plain haven't gotten around to having that first meeting. Oh, okay, well, so, all right. Let me use Grimm as an example. Grimm is an anarchist-minded fellow, right? Mm-hmm. Also, well, me and Grimm are never going to be in the same room at the same time. So we're not a group, but we're like-minded folk in that anarchy concept. And that's, I think, as far as that ever needs to go. I don't... I don't think it requires conversation. Or you know, Once you know the other guy knows, that's it. You're done. You're in the group. So what? And yet it's really not a group. Exactly. That's what I mean. You're never going to join group forces. And 60 million anarchists did. No. We're the 60 million that are going to go fuck you and your goddamn taxes. No. <laughs> mm-hmm. See, but... That, see, that's a long way down the road. Because not enough people are aware of the reality of government. They believe it's for them. And they get checks and jobs and all this crap, schools and things to prove the government's good for you. Hospitals. And all, but they don't have the ability to look at the results and understand how those results actually took place. They're told the lies, but they don't. They don't really understand that hospitals produce a lot of dead people on purpose. They oh yeah, killing you, man. Okay, well then they don't really understand that the police are knocking off a fair amount of civilians a year too. You know, not like it's crucial numbers. It's that it's fucking happening, and the public is being numbed to the civilian population being murdered by the police. Yeah. Man, if one person got killed in this country by the police, there would be a freaking uproar amongst population. <sighs> but you know, I don't think the population has the oomph to well, uproar. Well, I think this one does. And the the no. last and there was Sir told me about a, a cop down in Copenhagen was shamed, publicly shamed. And everybody in the city knew his face and shit. So, wow. Can you imagine everywhere you went, 
no matter what time of day it was or whatever, everybody knew you were a lion thief. Ooh, ouch. That would be horrible. Yeah. Yes, it would. And it would most definitely be a little reminder to not go there. But what do we do with Americans that that deserve that same kind of behavior? We call them president. We put them in Congress. Yeah, yeah. congressman, senator, judge, all these fucking lying pricks that people actually believe are there to help them are the bastards that are fucking us all equally. And your inability to see government as an enemy, well, the results are kind of obvious to some of us. And others don't see that. They see government as a positive thing in life. And I can't, I've gone way beyond all that. Yeah. Because it's just such a, a confronting slap in the face to be told how to live, I suppose. You know? <laughs> no? I mean, yeah. there's, there's laws that prohibit uh, private people from doing shit in every bit of dirt that's occupied by so-called civilized people. And they're all they fucking do is just gobble up all your fucking freedoms to behave how you want or how to live and like any of us are that bad in the first place so they make these ridiculous fucking boundary you know like boundaries for us to fall in between yeah well and what what struck you, know, you? Have you ever notice that all of these laws that that they put out there that individuals are not allowed to do these things. It's quite okay <laughs> for a government. <laughs> yeah, I know. But I know. the individual is not allowed to. Yeah, yeah. Well, there you go. And what what have we learned as a collective? Follow the fucking rules or they'll lock you up or shoot you. What what kind you know, what kind of freedom is that? It's not. It's it's that comfortable cage freedom, and yet they don't want you even seeing the comfortable part of it because then you'll also see the cage. Hmm. Well, my cage isn't so bad, I don't think. It would be. Well, and the thing is, we all build our own cages. Yeah, but it would be if people held me accountable for what my country does. I'd be very fucked here. But yes, you would. I, I don't. I don't think that uh, we have that kind of problem with the United States and with Denmark, but <coughs> excuse me, but Trump, he was, he did kind of put, put himself in the idiot box when he, he came out with that shit about Greenland. He lost a lot of people here in this little town I'm in. Oh, because, yeah, I, the, I still think it's all just yeah, show. But, well, maybe so, but see, the population here went with, well, who does this guy think he is? You know, what? Buying what? No, that's stupid. So it was more that the the office is being cheapened by the guy sitting in it. So it's not it's not being taken very seriously, you know? Yeah. Like when Obama and, was... Yeah, when you take it seriously, you actually acknowledge that it has some value to being taken seriously. Right. But when Obama was in power, uh, and, and I would make a derogatory comment about him to somebody in Scotland, that person was really insulted that I didn't suck the dick of that fucking black guy. Because, for one, they don't know that on paper he's not a black guy. He's... He's got white blood. Yeah. But you got to really dig into the meanings of all these legal words and definitions. It's really boring and mundane. And I don't think people are really interested in doing it. And if they do it, once you hear it, you can't unhear it. So I would recommend Clint Richardson if you want to hear it. If you want to read it yourself, do it. But be sitting down and have a pack of cigarettes or a all handy because it's going to slap you in the face that the system that we live under is so fucking deceitful and there's no recourse because we've been tricked into by being born into it compliance 
and their compliance is disguised as one thing, and then you go fight that, and the meanings of those words don't apply because they got that beat. No, no, no. Land doesn't mean land. Land is paper. <laughs> huh? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. because of enforcement, you can do miracles with word games. You just hire some thugs with some guns, and you go get them to do the, uh, what's Im not necessarily illegal. What, what the government did to the Bundys isn't illegal. It's immoral as fuck, but it's not illegal. They're going to win in court in the end. Well, yeah, and you can't legislate morality no matter how many. Well, it's right, four-year-old right, good. Right, really? Right. So they're, they're just doing a dog and pony show for the public to keep this rights crap going and gun sales up and get people to go to the stand in the gap. Those people didn't understand the laws or they wouldn't have gone. It was crazy. I told Vinny a long time ago, I wouldn't in a million fucking years do what you did. I just never told him why because I didn't really know why. I just knew I wouldn't do it. Then I listened to Clint explain in more detail what those fucking laws mean and what the, uh, what the people on the land are doing is not going to stand up in their court because they're in a kangaroo court. You're screwed. They're just stringing you along to go to you know a higher dollar lawyer system. It's a performance. We're we're being screwed over by the system, the very system we depend on for food and water and electricity is the same group of fucking thieves that are screwing us in our butts. It's a catch twenty two of life. You can't you, know, you can't fight it. And a lot of people don't because they don't even know it, it's a problem. They just think I'm crazy. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> that's okay. Yeah, you know. And if I'm you wrong, what? what? They're they they're just going by what they were taught. <laughs> and that that yeah. reminded me of something that I'd I'd had on Twitter a month or so ago. What you believe is true. Is it true? Or do you just possibly believe that it's true because you were taught that it's true and you never looked any further? <laughs> I agree. And that's, well, then there's another thing about comfort, see? Because comfort can get, come disguised as all kinds of different shit. Yes. You know, maybe my, And comfort is different to each person as well. Yeah, like being married is, it's a, a I don't have to travel anymore thing for me, too. I like that. Mm-hmm. Well, oh, I've had to travel a lot in my life, and, and I didn't really know I didn't want to until I stopped. You know, when I was completely, when I sat still for a while and got married and went, hey, you know what? <laughs> I don't want to go nowhere. So I was kind of new. Yeah. But all the years of, of repetition, you know, of what you know and, and doing stuff. <laughs> How do you know when you tr you know, when you get to the next level of whatever you're doing is? <laughs> yeah, I think you make it up as you go. Whatever suits well, the person telling the story, you know, it, they're the one in control of the point or the the moral or whether it's funny or not. Not you. How you hear it is yeah. on you, but they're still doing something with purpose. And I think that uh, it's fun in life to try to figure out what they're up to. And I use the word purpose as an explanation for an action, not not like a life or death reason. Yeah. Oh, my special purpose? No, no, no. Just it's an identifying word, like the color blue. Yeah. Well, you know, and my special purpose is comic relief. And if you don't find me amusing or funny, then damn. Seriously, I gotta work harder. No, because um, I think I I really do think for the most part life is just freaking funny. Not mm. always ha ha. Oh right, funny, right, right. Yeah. But yeah. it is funny. It is oh. funny odd most of the time, mm. and then funny ha ha once in a while. Mm. But I I try to find the. But that that is my self assigned yeah. purpose in life. And well, no sock, I don't have a stuffy nose, but I did have that mm. that rather weird feeling that maybe a sneeze was going to sneak out. 
and it left me with nothing but the funky face. You know that face you get just before a sneeze, and you kind of, and then it goes away? Yeah, all it left me was the face. (laughs) Hey, maybe we can get a t-shirt going out of this. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Oh, well. And Beetle, I do think door handles were made of copper once. And they say you should really have copper plumbing. Yeah, for your, over your PVC. W- true, true. But, we're, see, we're lied to. And, uh, not only that, but certain companies get involved in politics and make donations to certain candidates. So certain candidates will vote for certain companies to get hired to do certain jobs it's a fucking scam we're, we're being screwed like usual it's all nonsense everything bullshit you show me yeah. something that doesn't turn out to be bullshit and you know what it'll be it'll be something you can't share with me because it's yours just yours nobody else's just yours you, you know in the immortal immortal words of the farmer's eldest son. Eh, it'll make a turd. You know, and that's pretty much, that can be applied to everything. Eh, it'll make a turd. So, eh. Is that all you got? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Eh, it'll make I a turd. I expected so much more out of you on the dark table at your age, little missy, than it'll well, make a turd. Well, you know what? Turd. Sometimes, sometimes <laughs> the deepest, most profound uh-huh. things uh-huh. wind the, up being so very simple and yeah. something you really don't want to touch. <laughs> yeah, well, there you go, I guess, which is the point. And that's of, probably uh, why the world is in the shape that it's in right now, because, man, there's an awful lot of ugly truths out there, and a lot of people just don't want to go anywhere near it. That's, mm. that's an ugly one. I don't want to go. I don't want to touch that. Mm. Ooh. Really? Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know, I was had a thought the other morning, right? Cirque was going, uh, Cirque didn't go to work. And I thought, the day before, I had something on my mind early in the morning when I get up. It's late at night for everybody in RLM land. And I wake up, and some days I just got shit on my mind. So I thought, I think I'm going to do a, a, a spin-off show randomly when Cirque goes to work in the morning. When I got something deep in my mind, I'll do an hour show. And I'm going to call it Random Hits. <laughs> but it's going to be the dork table, but, the, you know, t- so people will know it's just me being me. It'll be called Random Hits, the dork table. <laughs> ah. I thought it was clever. I'm just bragging about how clever I am. You know? Well, because see how you are. why all the fear of conspiracy theories if they're just nonsense? Then why are the the people that are so afraid of them so obviously afraid of them? I don't know. Hmm. Have you noticed? Do you? Uh, how do you recognize somebody's fear in text on a chat screen? I recognize it as whatever you're opposed to. Whatever I'm opposed to, I would say I fear that as an enemy in my life. So I would assume the same of my fellows. What do you think, dear? Okay, what was that again? I'm, I'm still trying to process okay, that. What, I've, what I'm against is what I fear. And I assume that of my fellows. If I post something like, I'm anti-vaccination, that... My logical thinking brain has taken control and says, fear this, it is bad for you. Okay, and at the risk of my fellows laughing me you know, out of the room and calling me stupid, I stand on that. I don't want any of that. No, nah, not a bit of it. Or fluoride, or yeah, whatever it is that they want me to have. And so, you know, I don't even want anything in a beer in an aluminum can anymore. But is that not me being afraid of the opposition, whatever the opposition is? So whatever the opposition is against, that's what they're afraid of. 
Well, it's not necessarily, I don't think it's necessarily being afraid of something. It's just making, making a judgment and saying, nope, not interested. It's not necessarily a fear response because most fear responses, most, not all, but most fear responses are based on the, uh, fight or flight. part of the brain, okay. the fight or flight. So I'm being too rational for it to be that deep. I'm just looking at something, identifying yeah, you're, it. You're Playing looking at it, it you're looking bit. at what's going on around it, you're looking at mm. the results for other people, and you're going, eh, mm. no, not interested. You you were the example for me. Thank you very much. Mm. I'm not interested. Yeah, like the coronavirus and the com- just the complete, uh, the picture being painted before me and, and how it coincides with timelines for other plans that these people have and the places where they're saying this happens. And I don't trust them. I don't know what to expect out of human beings anymore they're all crazy i think they lost their fucking minds miss mary and i think we could do a lot better than we're doing if we didn't have all these uh, archaic laws on the books about stupid shit like uh, being able to poison the water and not being able to grow hemp to fix it you know yeah, well, it's all part of the, all part of the plan, all part of the, it's this whole poison for profit system, and I think that's just pretty much the way I look at all of it now is poison for mm. profit, whether they're poisoning your body or poisoning your mind, one way or another, it's a poison for profit. They're profiting off of it, whether it's financially or in the power and control way of looking at things. There is a profit. They have a gain. Yeah. And it's always at our expense. And as far as I'm concerned, I just don't want to play that game anymore. But you have to have enough people say, okay, I don't want to play that game anymore in order for it to start morphing. And I don't think it's going to ever be a quick, just all of a sudden, bam. You well, know, like, everybody's awoke. I don't, yeah, you're right. Because uh, I noticed Salt Lake City Mike hasn't been, hasn't been around today. And, and me and Mike disagree about society things, like the stock market uh-huh. and the battery is going to save the world. And I, I just think that this is another stage of the government fucking with the population, that nothing's going to come of it that's going to benefit us. We're we're just in the way. And well, and I wonder if maybe the battery isn't the isn't the the mediary point because there's energy all around us. Tesla knew that. Right, but the stock Tesla market. Well, and the stock market is just another one of those. I had, you know, when the kids were little, we had the game called stock market, uh-huh. just like Monopoly. And I think that's all it is. It's just people playing with here. Gambling, you know, if, yeah. if If it was told to them that all you're doing is exchanging debt and you really are when you accrue more of that stuff you're actually accruing more debt (laughs) you'd be surprised how many people quit playing i don't think so because if you're if you're in the game at that level of financial comfort it doesn't matter if it's real or not (laughs) and if you're alive and you have to eat whatever you have to do something in life that's life. People yeah. uh, people just don't exist because they're so fucking wonderful that they exist. That's not how life seems to be, but that maybe that's how it really is. And we've just not been taught that. And then, you know, who knows? I, I have my own personal opinions at my age, but then everybody else has too, so... As long yeah. as we're all colliding and creating the friction and not getting along about bullshit that doesn't matter, the better. Keeps this keeps this society alive longer. This crap that we live with. Because without and, it, we'd be dependent on each other and get a better quality because smaller groups would go, hey, I don't like this shit. What can we fix it with? And somebody would go, ah, I know what to do. And... And that's what we're stopped from doing. Yeah. See, and there, there it's, it's that whole colliding instead of cooperating. Because mm-hmm. any kind of movement causes friction. 
Yeah, you nah, can lubricate. Yeah. You can do this. You can do that. But any kind of movement causes Back to friction. Sex, and I huh? know. You dirty yeah. girl. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. Lube it, baby. I know. But... <laughs> wow, Mary. When Cirque hears this show, oh, boy, she's going to have a giggle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know what? If people wow. cooperate. I know. It's so the much friction easier. is a lot lower, and it actually yeah. works in a beneficial manner as opposed to a detrimental manner. And that's what they've got us doing. They've got us colliding instead of cooperating. Same first letter. It's just different the whole concept, different way of looking at things. Both of them cause friction. Like in Batman when a an immovable object hits a non-stoppable force. <laughs> you get bam, kapow, zowie. You know, and you know, for the longest time, when I was little, I thought those things should just pop up there. You should have those sounds. Because I could hear my brothers downstairs arguing and fighting and, you know, playing with their army mans and stuff and going, bam, kapow, kapow. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I always thought maybe those little those little comment bubbles Bubble. would just come up. You oh, know? yeah, you're funny. Uh-huh. But they didn't. No, they don't. You just know, you just the hear the noises. Yes. But on Batman, they were there. <laughs> I know. See, it's this the is... The innocence a, of the young. No, this is what I mean about the, the actual the control of the electronic world on our ability to see life in certain lights. And we see these things, right? And mm-hmm. And according to the story that you're being told, you're being led down this road to believe a certain thing took place. Uh Uh-huh. There you go. Well, I started to wonder why certain things were more important to be told than others. Yeah, and that's that's kind of sort of where I'm at right right. now is why don't why don't they want us talking about this? Why are they or why do they? Yeah, why do they want us talking yeah. about one thing yeah. and why don't they and and I'm just obnoxious and spiteful or however you wish to put it mm-hmm. enough to go um you don't want me talking about this? Well, guess what? I'm going to go check it out now. Well, just because you told me not to. And and I've become suspicious of the uh documentaries that I've seen about shit that took place in like the 70s, especially in the 70s, because it never happened so badly before the 70s, but boom, it, the 70s hit, and all of a sudden, you got Ted Bundy doing all this horrible, terrible stuff to these little women that all looked alike and all like that, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so today, here we are all these years later. And they got all these documentaries, and they're really putting a lot of attention on video and film and this, that, and the other, acting to, but trying to stay as close to the script as they possibly can that, that Bundy took. Mm-hmm. Well, it started to make me wonder, is it possible that we're being 9-11 one more time by the government? And oh, not not yeah. to say that Ted Bundy didn't kill anybody, but what if he was one of those psyop fuckers that the CIA drugged with some kind of who knows what Yahuchi? You know, and control. And you know, his... I I used to ask about that. Why why do we have so many more nowadays? And everybody said, Oh well they had them way back then too. It's just that they didn't have the media to let everybody know. Well, okay, that sounds like a logical, you know, way right. of putting well, it. That, you know, that the, could be an ex- explanation or an excuse. I've seen all the all the available knowledge on this particular case, right? And I mm-hmm. I come out of the end of it doubting that this is nature, and coming out with I wonder what the fuck kind of system that we got with. You know, make make a monster out of somebody and watch him go out and kill. Oh yeah, and well, because you got to have something to be afraid of in order to have 
it's the you know the heroes step in and save the day. It's the Hegelian dialectic that has been working for centuries. Right, but they claim these kind of murderers have existed, right? But all the physical mm-hmm. evidence to prove the stories about these other killers has all been destroyed. So the only thing that's left to us to prove the story is true is you believe it or you don't. And as I've aged, I've started to wonder, you know, they bomb everything out of freaking existence to, you know, that is true. And then they got Donald Trump going over to Israel and moving things around and embassies. All this magical religious crap is going on. And people are getting, you know, been in war for like 200 and something years. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Well, it's gotten to the point, somebody called, yelled at me the other day, hey, American, and I felt bad when I heard it. That's why. Cause, ah. Because I feel like the country I'm from is a, it's a warmonger, and it just goes around the world picking on, on all the weaklings and bucking them up. It's the bully on the beach going around and kicking sand in the face of all of the 90-pound weaklings, yeah. And then they yeah. extort them to go away. I'll tell you what, if you guys rebuild these and these companies, we'll loan you the money. <laughs> you know, And we'll, we'll yeah. just leave a little base over here for a couple of 20, 30, 40 years. But we'll leave eventually. Yeah. And why? This is what's great. This is the fucking you know, bit of dirt I'm from, what it represents. Gobbling up the small guy and stealing his shit, fucking his people up. Yeah, and then saying, "How dare you have a government so close to our base? Military base? How dare yeah. you?" Yeah, but they did. But they That's did an act it. of aggression. I tell you what, doesn't make any difference that your, you know, your home, hmm. your domicile, your country, however you wish to put that was there centuries before, you now have that by our military base, and that's an act of aggression. Right, and this military shit is so... When the petrodollar collapses, who's going to fuel the fucking military? What are you guys going to do? I mean, you guys. But I'm saying, my fellow Americans back yonder away, what are you going to do when you don't have those big old aircraft carriers go bully people around with? Then what are you going to do? Throw rocks at them? It's a long well, we'll way to see. China. <laughs> you throw rocks at them, and I'm sure the Israeli army will show up with their wonderful guns and start shooting at you because they fear for their life but, because well, you're so far away that those rocks can't even come within 100 yards of them. That By golly, I fear for my life. I have to shoot you now. How are they going to pay for the fuel to do all this fighting if there's no petrol dollar that they're all depending on right now? If that collapses, what? See, this is what I mean. Details. Details are very merry. When you make a, when you make a cake, and you don't follow the recipe, the way the recipe was told, you ad lib uh-huh. a little bit, you still come out of it with a cake, but it's not the cake that the recipe called for, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the same thing. This war thing has a recipe to it, and. To me, it's all fueled on the uh, petrodollar. And if I'm wrong, maybe some brainiac can point out and explain to me so I see the error of my way. But the next in line is China for control over whatever the petrodollar is to control the oil. Or Russia, and I think Russia, wait a minute, they're way, they're way too quiet. Seems like they're pushing China in our face. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Well, Well, China won the spin. You know the Wheel of Fortune game? Yeah. You know, they spun that wheel and China's name came up. And so now they're the boogeyman on the block. But, you know, the next time they spin the wheel, it'll be someone else. It'll be a hell of a... something else. It'll be a hell of a way to really get people to support nuclear, too. Well, yeah. See, because I don't really... The legal definition of some of these words have changed my perspective on what we're told and how I interpret it, okay? Because we're taught nuclear waste. Look up what nuclear waste means in a legal definition. 
<laughs> it's not what you think. See, because we're taught what we're taught. And there's mm-hmm. legal definitions to these things. But they don't tell us, hey, there's a legal definition that this has nothing to do with. <laughs> we're just using these words. <laughs> they mean something else. So go hey, go play with yeah. your go play with your little brother and leave me alone. I'm busy. Yeah. Well, this is how we get treated as adults and we tolerate it. And as an adult that's tolerated it all these years, I say, fuck you. <laughs> Not you, but fuck you, yeah. system. Yeah, the colloquial you. Yeah. Right, but man, it's so, so hard to live up to, but I still say it. Yeah. But well. I'm a civilized, see, it's a paradox. I'm a civilized being in the 21st century. Therefore, I have all my paperwork like a good fucking slave. It's sickening. So I, I use the radio to complain about it. <laughs> like a good Jew. You, you do a bang up job of it, let me tell you. But, you know, seriously, it's, yeah, I could take that seriously to the point of you know, mentally obeying it like I believe it. But it's just a hoop I have to go through so that I can live the life that I like to live. Yeah. Yeah, because that's the societies that we've accepted. It's insane. Until you do it, you probably don't really think it's insane. Try it, though. Get a passport and travel to another country and... and you'll find that all the crap and the drama comes from America. When you get to the other place, they're pretty lax. Yeah. People don't expect a whole lot. Just mind your fucking business. Don't bother anyone. You get along. There you go. Mm Mm-hmm. Try doing that in L.A. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, good luck. Because people got to know what your business. Now, they usually got cops and you know, enforcement and all that necessary uh, social stuff to keep the bad fellows in line. And and the reality of it is the bad fellows are the ones that are running everything, and people don't seem to get that. They can't grasp that the master is actually whipping them. Well, and you can actually see the way they're morphing the language because now everything, oh, man, that's so sick, which is supposed to be cool. Mm-hmm. You know, back when we were kids, it was mm-hmm. cool mm-hmm. or neato mm-hmm. or nifty or, I don't know, I stole some of those from, <coughs> excuse me, pre- previous generations. But, <laughs> you know, and now it's, oh, man, that's so sick mm-hmm. or that's thick or mm-hmm. that's bad or that's, and it's like, really? So you're taking all of these words that used to mean something you did not want, but now, now they mean Wow, talk about topsy turvy world, mm. and and they it's all with the kids because kids are more impressionable. Kids are learning. Kids are picking up on this crap and going, oh hey, you know, if you want to be cool, if you want to be fly, whatever, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you got to use this terminology now. Really? Okay, I'm just gonna keep saying cool and peachy because if something's sick then it needs to be assisted so that it can heal. You know, it's mm-hmm. not something way cool that I really want to aspire for. I don't want to aspire to be sick. Mm-hmm. So it's it's the some language. Some people would say you are, though, because you have, you know, uh, conspiracy. Yeah, some say I'm, you've I'm got, and wrong. But you've got conspiracy theory uh, belief standards to a, yeah, you know, well. to a, a what would you call it? Facebook public? You are, uh, you just don't know what's going on. You know? Yeah, I know. Yeah, I don't. You're missing, you're missing a channel on your TV set there, you little dork. I know. know I'm what, tuned into UHF instead yeah. of VHF. What you Look need, that one up. what you need is a good dose of state shove up the parts so that you could, you know, get, rooted into government and see the error of your way. I think I need an inoculation. Yeah, but there... I obviously do not have enough adjuvants in my system. And that's how seriously that I think me and you take it. It's there. It exists. But believing in it is the... That's the thing right there. And people are... 
our belief systems have been tampered with, I believe, because of yeah. all the input. You've got so many choices. You can go religious. You can go education. Uh, you can go science. You could go nature. I, I could probably think of more if I really give it some consideration. But I'm just saying there's there's choices in life. But when you do the society thing, there's no more choices. You do society or you don't. Hmm. And society hmm. does not involve or include nature and science and reason. It's like only law and law alone defines these fucking thieves. And none of them live up to their fucking laws. But they run the law, so what are you going to do? Go up against them? What if they're going to go, fuck you. You know, and that's another one of those things that just irks the hell out of me. Hmm. You hear these people talking about the Constitution and the laws are the foundation. They're the base of our society, the basis of our society. Now, a foundation is like the lowest level. You know, it's it's what you build upon, correct? So the foundation, the, our laws are the foundation or the basis of our society. And yet they say... No one is above the law. So does that mean that we all live below the cellar, below the foundation, down in the depths? Or are they saying that kind of stuff to keep our mind confused? Because technically, if it's if the law is the foundation or the basis, then we all live above the law. And those that break the law sink into the depths of depravity. It's how you look at it. And exactly. I keep trying to yeah. put that point out there, and people yeah. just keep looking at me like Bambi in the headlights. Well. And I want to tell them, you listen to the words that they're using. Yeah. It's the foundation of our government, well. the foundation of our society, and yeah. yet no one is above the law. So obviously yeah. they consider us all beneath the foundation or down in the dirt, a.k.a. Right. Dead and buried. But you got to realize there's one main rule to this whole thing. What's All that? It, and it doesn't matter what your law is or is not. Is you got to break a law first. You don't, you know. So writing it down and having punishments and enforcement and all that crap, it's all fine and well, but it's part of a design. Because if we were taught from an early age the exact opposite of the shit we're taught, we would value life and not do the crap we do. True. Okay. But I've got the ability of looking back on a lifetime of all these changes and coming to these decisions. Now, that doesn't mean they're true. They just mean they're true from me. <laughs> you may yeah. see it differently, and that's, that's the whole fucking point. Your life, it's your life. If your life sucks, guess who's sucking? <laughs> it ain't me. Because <laughs> that's not what I claim. You know? I think yep. life is fine. Now, I might have a bad day or my ass might be dragging because it's fucking cold. And I'm not a big winter guy. I get a little bummy in the wintertime like a girl. So, yeah. But in the summertime, I'm just a little overheated. But it's way it's way easier for me to tolerate heat than cold. So yeah, yeah. Well, there's a lot of people that live in places that would make this cold look warm. Uh, you know. Oh yeah. So I do I do as little complaining about it as I can because it could be a lot worse. As far as cold goes, I'm just not I'm not from the climate, so I'm never gonna acclimate to it. And it, it's kind of a Jew moment where I get to whine about something that doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Climate change. Mm. Just wait a couple mm. months. It'll <laughs> you know it, too. Ain't that the truth? Anyway, I had fun today. Did you have a good time yeah. with on the door yes, table? Yes, I did. Well, good. Yes, I did. And in the long run, I don't, I don't know what's wrong with this conspiracy theory. I just don't see why the, why the system that we live under has such fear of it. Unless because they're true and they don't want to be exposed. <laughs> Otherwise, why would you pay attention to it at all? I, mm, 
You know, when yeah, when, I think the system is fearful because it, it knows it's based on mm. falsehoods, mm. and anything that's based on falsehoods is going to going to uh, vibrate in that negative zone. Mm. You know, in the in the fear, in the baser emotions, yeah. if you will, anything yeah. that must have control and exert control yeah. over another, yeah. not not just controlling themselves, but exert control over another yeah. with violence. Yeah. That that's in a negative zone there, and it's going to be fearful that something else is going to take that control away from it because that's the only way it can maintain control over another is with the use of fear and what you put out mm -hmm. is what you get back yeah but it seems there. it seems to me though it's the equivalent of you ever see a five-year-old's going to run away from home you know and the whole the whole performance is so that you'll tell that little five-year-old oh don't leave be come here be me but, you know, when I was five years old, I did run away from home because my boyfriend was moving away out of kindergarten. And I was so sad that I was running away to his house so I could move away with him. And right, his house yeah. was only a couple of blocks away, yeah. and mom and dad found me. But, yeah. you know, and I got a SWAT, and he moved away anyway. And, you know, I can't even remember his name now. But by God, at five years old, I was traumatized. See? <laughs> right. And, and as you grow... You either learn to not react certain ways to certain events, or you get worse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I think, because life's full of fucking ups and downs. You know, sometimes, and I think we make our own downs and ups and all that. It's just we're not really tuned in to that concept. It's very vague. You know, it's something you got to really uh, believe and pay attention, like a religious thing or a. An education, you know, a point of education. This is uh, agreed upon by these guys at this university, so therefore it's true. No, it's a scientific consensus. So. Yeah, People, no. it's one, another one of those things where they only hear part of it. Yeah, scientific consensus. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily fact, yes. or even got any proof anywhere remotely close to proving it or supporting it. But it, there's a consensus. Yeah. Well, yeah, but see, when you encourage that little kid to leave instead of pulling them to you, you get the exact opposite result. You know, when I was mm -hmm. talking about when a kid's threatening to run away, uh -huh. when you encourage them to run, you get the exact opposite result as if you pulled them and said, don't run. Now, I was... It's true. I was told, I was encouraged. My dad said, yeah, you threatened. And I said, yeah, here, let me pack your bag. And uh, <laughs> then when I was older, I did just left. See, They set the stage, not willing, not really experienced with their own life to know what they were setting me up for. They were just doing shit, you know, with a kid. They, they were kids with a kid. Yeah. Right. Plus a mixed marriage from one country to the other. It was a really weird, exciting time to grow up. And to be where I'm at today is just like, <laughs> sometimes I just don't get why, you know, how I got so lucky in life. It's very weird. You know, and because yeah. I always sound like I'm bragging and it's like, I got nothing to complain about. It's like, what's wrong? There's God Jewish. There's got to be something fucking wrong somewhere, you know. And if you're Jewish, if you look hard enough, you'll make somebody wrong. <laughs> it's what we do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. hard. It's a hard lesson to learn about yourself. Is that you're the one in control of what you're doing? Because it's really easy to fall into that mood crap and, and not really be aware kind of be blind to you what you're really doing and, and not see we'll we'll talk about it another door table because yeah we'll come there you the go end. yeah because we're out of time and we got a schedule for those of you that want to hear other programs on uh, real liberty media.com you know grim's little project yeah grimmy says we were talking about consensus yeah <laughs>
Oh, hey. In any case, yeah, go to reallibertymedia.com, and I'm sure you can find all kinds of wonderful things. You can go to the blogs, or because I don't have the schedule pulled up, so I'm just not going to go there. <laughs> I do know that tomorrow at noon, Grimmy's going to be on noon Eastern time, by the way. Grim is going to be on play in the blues mm -hmm. and there will be a rousing game of trivia going on in the RLM chat for those of you who are interested or have a trivial type of mind and directly following him is Hal Anthony going to be on. I believe I so. Know. Yeah. He only okay. had his, his internet was down the ah. one time in all this, in all his recording days. And that just yeah. was a fluke. He couldn't get, yeah, he couldn't get connected till the Wednesday after his, uh, Show is uh, supposed to be up. But no, it's over, I believe. Okay, so Hal will be back tomorrow directly following Grimner. And for the rest of the week, yeah. there's all kind of shows on. Just keep coming back and checking out. And you can also listen to the autoplay uh, on RLM or go to the podcasts and find one that you really like. We're also on YouTube and BitChute. So go check them out. And thank you guys. For letting us play along on this Saturday afternoon slash evening slash morning, whatever your time zone may be. There, I'm done. I'm Good night, done. everybody. <laughs> oh, and thanks a lot for helping me out with the dork table. Certainly. And next it was week? Fun. You be back next week? Uh, next week, Saturday. Mm -hmm. I think I will be, but mm -hmm. okay. I think I will be. Thanks a lot, everybody. Night. Okay. See you, love you, bye.